hello welcome to this lesson in this video we are going to learn about independence of events okay so let's look at that so i have some examples here and then before we solve the examples um, i want to explain the concept of independence to you first okay so as we have events a and b okay here and then you want to find out if a and b are independent events the only way that you can do this is to check if any of what these three statements what are true okay if any of these three statements are true then that means what event a and b are independent so the first statement says that the probability of a given b should be equal to the probability of a and then the probability of b given a should be equal to the probability of what b and then also the probability of a intersection b should be equal to the probability of a multiplied by the probability of what b okay so if any of these three statements are satisfied and that means that what the event a and b are independent okay that's what uh, this means okay so now let's look at the examples that i have here so the question is that uh, if the probability of a given b is equal to 0 0.4 and then the probability of b equals 0 0.8 okay and then the probability of a equals 0 0.5 are the events a and b independent so we are going to find out if events a and b are independent in this case okay using the knowledge that we have now okay so now let's look at that so we've been given the probability of a given b has already occurred to be 0 0.4 and then we've been given the probability of b to be equal to 0 0.8 and then the probability of a to be 0 0.8 five so you want to find out if event a hours independent right okay so how do we uh, how do we prove this all right so if you look at the first statement it says that the probability of a given b has occurred should be equal to as probability of what a right but if you look at what you have here we have here the probability of a given b has occurred right and then here we have what the probability of a okay but if we look at the answers for both uh, of them here we have 0 0.4 and then we have a 0 0.5 here so you see that they, were, they are not the same that means what we are actually considering this statement but um it is not true in this case because the probability of a given b is equal to 0 0.4 and then the probability of a is what 0 0.5 and then those two values are not are not, are not the same so in this case we are going to see that what the event a and then b are not independent simply because the probability of a given b is not equal to the probability of what a okay that's for this case okay so that's how to apply this all right so now let's look at another question okay so i have here this question which is that if the probability of a given b is equal to 0 0.3 and then the probability of b equals 0 0.8 and then the probability of a equals 0 0.3 are the events b and then the complement of a independent so let's look at how we are going to solve this also okay so from this question you can see that, that uh, events a and b are independent right because the probability of a giving b is 0 0.3 and then the probability of a is also at 0 0.3 so in this case we can say that that the probability of a and b sorry event a and b are what independent but the question is saying that are the event b and then the complement of what a independent have you seen the difference so it's not a this time around but rather what the complement of what a right so let's look at how you're going to solve this question so you have the probability of a giving b to be equal to 0 0.3 then you have the probability of b to be equal to 0 0.8 and then the probability of what a to be equal to 0 0.3 so you want to find the you want to find out whether the complement of a and b are what independent right so for us to be able to do this you will have to find the probability of a complement which will be equal to 1 minus the probability of what a right and then this will be equal to 1 minus 0 0.3 which will give us a value of 0 0.7 so that'll be the probability of what a complement okay so how are you going to uh, find out if a and b are what independent how are you going to do this okay so let's look at how you're going to do this 
so we know that uh, we can see that two events are independent if any of the uh, following statements are true the first one is um, in this case you are going to see that the probability of a prime giving b should be equal to the probability of what a prime right and then secondly the probability of b giving a prime should be equal to the probability of what b right and also the probability of a prime intersection b should be equal to the probability of a times the probability of what b right so let's go what you are going to do so i'm going to take the third statement because you know the probability of a prime and then we know the probability of what b right so let's find the probability of a prime intersection b so we're going to have the probability of a prime intersection b to be equal to the probability of a prime times the probability of what b so we're going to have 0 0.7 times what 0 0.8 right so let's see what you're going to get so 0 0.7 times 0 0.8 that gives us a value of 0. 56 right so that's the probability of a prime intersection what b prime okay let's take note of this all right so what are you going to do next so from the first statement we know that if uh, a prime and b are independent then the probability of what a prime giving b should be equal to the probability of what a prime right so what you are going to do is that from conditional probability we know that if you have two events okay uh, where uh, one event is dependent on the other you're going to have the probability of what let's say in this case a prime is dependent on b then you're going to have the probability of a prime giving b to be equal to the probability of a prime intersection what b okay divided by the probability of what b right okay so this okay we a prime will be independent if and only if this okay gives us what the probability of what a prime which is what the 0 0.7 so if you're able to get if you're able to get the probability of what a prime intersection b divided by the probability of b to be equal to the probability of a prime then this means that what a prime and what b are what independent right and then we already know what a uh, a prime intersection b is and then you know what the probability of what b is right so let's find out if they are independent okay so let me let me continue from here okay we are continuing from here so the probability of a prime intersection b is what you have here which is the 0 0.56 so you're going to have 0 0.56 divided by the probability of b which is what 0 0.8 so divide by what 0 0.8 when we do this we are going to have 0 0.7 okay so at the end you will see that what the we can say that therefore the probability of what a prime giving b is equal to a 0 0.7 and then this is the same as what we had when we calculated for the probability of what a prime so in this case you are going to say that what the probability of what um you are going to see that the event a prime and then b are what independent simply because the probability of a prime okay giving b has okay gave us the same value as what the probability of what a prime which is what the 0 0.7 so in this case you're going to see that what the event b and then the complement of a are what independent okay so that's what this means let's look at the next example okay so let's look at this question also so i have this table here which has uh parts that have been what classified okay into those that are defective those that have surface flaws those that are not defective and then those that do not have surface flaws okay the question says that we should find out uh, if events f and d are what independent event d refers to the event that the parts are defective and then event f refers to the event that the parts have what surface flaws okay so let's look at how you are going to solve this question so let's look at the statement okay so in this case you have d and f so for us to find out if they are dependent you have to test for any of our different statements so first of all we must find out if the probability of d given f has already occurred is equal to the probability of d okay and then also the probability of f given d has occurred should be equal to the probability of f 
and also the probability of d okay intersection f should be equal to the probability of d times the probability of what f right so we are going to apply this statement to find out if event f and then d are what independent okay so before you can uh, do this we have to find the probability of d probability of f and then the probability of what d intersection f okay so let's look at that so let's find the probability of what d okay so probability of d okay which is the probability of a part being defective will be uh, the total number of defective parts that we have which is 20 over the total number of parts okay so that's going to be 20 over over 400 okay that's going to be 20 over 400 okay so this will give us a value of what 2 over 40 okay so now let's find the probability of uh, a part having a surface floor so the number of parts that have surface floors will be this 40 here so they are going to have 40 over the 400 okay so this will cancel out this you are going to have 4 on 40 here okay let's leave it this way you can simplify it if you want to so now let's find the probability of a part having a surface floor and then at the same time being defective that will be the probability of the intersection what f okay so let's look at that so a part having a uh, being defective and then having a surface floor that's going to be uh, this two that we have here so that's going to be we're going to have two over 400 as a probability okay so now this is what we have okay so now let's find out if the event f and d are independent okay so first of all we're going to test for this then when we are done we test for this also so now from conditional probability you are going to have the probability that uh, the probability of d given f to be equal to the probability of what d intersection f over the probability of what f okay if this uh, is actually equal to the probability of d which is the 2 on 40 then we can see that what event d is not dependent on what event what f okay i think i'll have to simplify this okay let's simplify this let's find out what, what 2 on 40 is that will give us a value of what 1 on 20 okay so this is actually 1 on 20 and then 4 on 40 that will be 1 over 10 so let's have 1 over 10 here also okay so let's simplify it i think that will help okay so at the end we can see that what uh event d is not dependent on f if only uh what you have here is equal to the probability of what d okay so now let's find out if um, we are going to get that to be true so let's find the probability of d intersection f over the probability of what f so probability of d intersection f will be 2 over 400 right i think we should simplify that one also so 2 over 400 that gives us a value of 1 over 200 okay so again to have 1 over 200 okay divided by the probability of f which will be 1 over what 10 okay this is what you are going to have so this should be equal to it should be equal to 1 over 200 okay times 10 over 1 right so you are going to have 10 over what 200 this will give us a value of what 1 over what 20 so you will see that this value that we got okay this value that we got here is actually the same as the value that we got for the probability of 40 d so that means that what event d is not dependent on what event what f okay so that's what this means so we're going to do the same for event f also we are going to find out if event f is dependent on what event d or not okay so let's look at that so let me free out some space then we continue okay so finding the probability that uh, so for that one you are going to have from conditional probability okay you are going to have the probability that uh, the probability of f given d okay should be equal to the probability of d intersection f over the probability of what d okay if this is equal to the probability of f then that means that what event f is not dependent on what event what d so we know the probability of f already which is what 1 over 10 right so let's find out if 
if what we have here will give us what 1 over what 10 so let's look at that so we know that the probability of d intersection f will give us 1 over 200 right so dividing this by the probability of d okay that will be divided by what 1 over 20 right so i think you're going to have 1 over 200 times 20 over 1 okay so uh, then you are going to have 1 over 10 which is the same as the probability value that we got for f okay so you see that what you have here is the same as what what you have here so in this case we can see that the probability of f so we can the event f is not dependent on what event d okay so i have this example here which you are going to try on your own okay i'll give you the answer okay uh, the answer is that they are not independent okay so you have to find out the reason why they are not independent and then share your answer with me in the comment section so you have that if the probability of a is equal to 0 0.2 and then the probability of b is equal to 0 0.2 and then a and b are mutually exclusive are they independent that's what the question says so the answer is that they are not independent okay they are not independent so find out the reason why they are not independent and then share your views uh, with us in the comment section